In this video, I'm going to show you how I build an AI app that summarizes podcasts from audio files by chaining together OpenAI's Whisper with their API while only having very rudimentary understanding of code. How am I going to do this? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm just going to ask ChatGPT how. So follow me along as I troubleshoot my way through this and together with me, you can now build your first AI app after which you can add AI developer into your LinkedIn bio. Along the way, you'll also learn how to use different AI powered tools that I use in my everyday work. And I'll probably end up revealing a few of my secret workflows because I'm a blabbermouth. But okay, are you ready? Right, let's get to it. So what I was saying about the rudimentary understanding of code before is that I know that we're gonna build this with Python and I know the packages that we're gonna be using. So let me pull up my Figma over here. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to input an audio or video file. Then we're going to send it to open AI whisper. And after that, we're going to send it to open AI API uh, GPT 3.5. So this is what it's going to look like. So we're going to input files like dot mov dot mp4 dot wave or dot mp3 so whichever these files are the first thing that we're going to do is if video files so if they're video files we're going to extract the audio in mp3 and if if wave file then convert to mp3 and if it's an mp3 file then we're just going to continue. So we have these three conditions here. So we're going to input these file formats. If it's a video file, then we're going to extract the audio. If it's a wave file, we're going to go to mp3. And if it's mp3 file, we're just going to continue. So in any of these cases, we're going to send it to now open a whisper. And in whisper, what we're going to do is we're going to transcribe it into txt, transcribe it as a txt file. And what we're also going to do is we're going to provide some extra context, extra context, right? And so let's for now build up, build out these first two steps over here. So let's go to our code editor. What I'm using is cursor. Uh, cursor is a fork or a copy of VS code, which is one of the most uh, well-known code editors out there that you can download for free. Cursor is paid. It does have some sort of free plan, but I'm paying like 20, uh, 20 euros a month for it. And it's a fork of VS Code, but it's an AI first code editor. So it's very convenient. I have my AI chat top right over here that I can use and just chat to the AI. And uh, I also have some like other functions. So inside our code editor, the first thing uh, I want to do, because I know that we're going to be building this in Python. What I want to do is I want to build or start or create a virtual environment. So it's just a small virtual environment where inside which I'm going to install all these Python packages. So I know that nothing is conflicting and everything's like a fresh install. So uh, I want to create a new Python environment. Okay, and let's see what it tells us. Okay, and it's telling me to open my terminal so we can terminal, new terminal. And it's telling me to navigate to the project. So we're inside the project already by default. And it's telling me to run this command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this command. And it created a new folder, environment, bin, and everything else. And to activate the environment, I now have to run this command. So I'm just going to copy it, paste it. And now you see we're inside this environment. So first step is done. We're making progress here. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and name it app.py. So .py is a Python file. Okay, I'm going to start a new chat. This I want to create an app that inputs MOV, uh, MP4, Wave, and MP3 files. If it's anything else than an MP3, extract the audio and con convert to mp3 and uh, what we're going to do also is i'm going to tell it that input files from inputs folder output the uh, mp3 files into audio folder so let's right now build only the first step 
that we're taking whatever is in the input file. It could be a movie file, it could be an audio file, and then take the audio from there and convert it into MP3. And the reason I want to do that is because WAV files and movie files are way too big, so it's going to take a long time to upload them. So instead, let's convert them into a small audio file that we can easily, quickly upload and transcribe. And uh, what I'm also going to do here is say that for this, I want to use FFmpeg and also give me FFmpeg install command. Right, so I'm going to run it. So FFmpeg is a package. Uh, it's a media editor, basically. It's a code line interface media editor that you can use, and it's very powerful, especially for things like this. Okay, first, uh, for Mac OS, it's telling me to use Ownbrew, so brew install FFmpeg, which, yeah, I can do. I'm going to quickly check the browser if there's FFmpeg also inside the Python uh, app managers here. So I'm going to Google FFmpeg, or like search for FFmpeg over here, and we can see that there's a Replit one and there's other things. So actually I can use the Brew one, I think, no problem. So I actually have Brew FFmpeg installed on my computer already, but since we're using the virtual environment, I might have to run it again. Let's see if it's going to start installing. Okay, so it's telling me that I already have it installed and it's up to date. So uh, let's see if we can actually use this. We might be able to use this, we might not be able to use this. So if it's going to fail, we're going to just troubleshoot this process. So I'm going to copy this code that it gave me, and I'm going to paste it into map.py. Let's see, inputs folder. Okay, inputs, output folder, audio. And it's going to take the files, and it's going to output an mp3. Okay, and does it use the ffmpeg anywhere here? Oh yeah, it's calling a sub-process with ffmpeg. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to create a new folder, call it inputs. And I'm going to create another new folder, call it audio. And in the input folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up over here. And I'm just going to use one of my client podcasts. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click final. So I'm just going to use the episode that got released today uh, by Jim Quick, the Jim Quick podcast. And we have the episode Jack Delaccio. So I'm going to use that as an example. And then I can forward the team all these things that we generate. So it's a pretty big uh, movie file. It's 3.82 gigabytes. So imagine uploading this. It's going to take a while. So this is why we're going to only extract the audio and then work with the audio because this is a realistic scenario. You've been given a final video file and now you have to do your summaries and everything. But uh, I mean, let's just make our lives easier and extract the audio from it and just only work with the audio. So, okay, we have Jack Delaccio here in our inputs folder and our outputs is empty. Perfect. So uh, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to run python 3 appy and that will hopefully run our app and then convert the checkdelasha.mov into put it into the audio folder as an mp3. And it's working. Next step, what we're going to do is, so we've covered this step. Now we want to send it to OpenAI Whisper and transcribe it into TXT and give it a bit of extra context. So let's see if we've converted our file successfully and then we can start working on it. So I'm going to check the audio folder and we do have an mp3 file here. Perfect, everything works. So first step done, first step works perfectly. You might not always be given like code like this that is perfect and it works on the first try. And if it doesn't work, we're definitely gonna run into some errors later down the line. So in that case, you're gonna see how I troubleshoot through these things. Because this is actually my second run in this tutorial. That's why I knew how to make these things, how to do these things. Because I figured it out while doing the first one, so I wanted the I wanted the experience to be a bit more smooth for you. So that's why I'm re-recording this video. Anyway, uh, movie magic aside, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build the second part. I'm gonna tell it, great, works perfectly. Let's now add new functionality. I want to transcribe the MP3 file with OpenAI Whisper. And since uh, ChatGPT's knowledge is stuck at a certain date, it doesn't know that the OpenAI Whisper package exists, really. So to uh, solve this problem, what I'm going to do now is just search for OpenAI Whisper in the Python package managers. And let me see if I can find it. I couldn't find it, so I'm going to just like back up a bit. Because I have it here. Okay, OpenAI Whisper. So this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this one. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything, copy the code, and then paste it in here. So it's it's going to see that it exists and it's going to get all the documentation. It knows how to run this. Actually, let me try another way. So I actually have it installed already on my computer. But what I did is I installed it with Homebrew. So it's the same way as we've installed FFmpeg as a sub process. So we can run it as a sub process as well. So I think that might be an easier way if you're just running it locally. So we have C FFmpeg from here. So to install a Homebrew, um, it's very easy. You just, uh, it's a package manager. So what you want to do is you want to just copy this code and follow the tutorial. You have to change like a few things there, but it's all very easy. And uh, then after you have it installed, you can run commands in your terminal like brew install ffmpeg, for example, which is going to install ffmpeg and also open AI whisper, uh, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I want to transcribe the mp3 file with open AI whisper. I have it installed with homebrew. The command is whisper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the full Python tutorial in here and I'm going to paste the full homebrew formula in here as well. So hopefully between those two, it's going to figure out how to use it properly. So it's telling me to transcribe the MP3 files using OpenAI's Whisper. You can use the Python API by the library. Okay. And it's telling me to import Whisper. So let's see if we can do this. Let's see if this solution works because that was the original solution that I had in mind. So it uh, kind of like skipped my idea right now of using it as a sub process. But if this doesn't work, then we can come back to the sub process. So I'm going to, since we're in a virtual environment, I'm going to install pip install open AI whisper. Maybe I should have done pip three install. So let's see if this works or not. Might be a mistake. Okay. Uh, just to be sure I'm useless. It's going to bloat the project, but I'm going to do pip three install open AI whisper as well. So we definitely have it installed. Okay. It was installed already. So that was good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this code, paste it here. And uh, if file in input folder already exists as mp3, return message mp3 exists already and don't convert it and send it straight to whisper. So I'm going to add this little check here. So if we've already converted it, check the lacio.mov. And we have the mp3, so I'm going to make a check if the mp3 file already exists. And if it exists, then we're going to send that straight to Whisper. So we don't have to reconvert all these files every single time we run the app. Okay, and now it's giving me the code. So let's just wait for it to generate. Okay, the code's ready. I'm just going to copy it, paste it in here, save it again. And uh, let's try running the app now. So I'm going to try python3 app.py. So hopefully it's now going to skip the mp3 file so it's going to return to me that mp3 file exists so skipping conversion and it's going to go straight to uh, transcribing and what is the output path here that's actually what i do output folder okay output folder is audio i'm going to keep it like this for now and if it doesn't work then i'm going to make the changes that i want to make so clicking enter so it says mp3 file for jack delacci already exists skipping conversion and now it's giving me this warning for the conversion. Now, I suspect that the conversion is working already right now. It's just not showing anything. So what I'm going to do is, um, meanwhile, this is happening. I'm going to troubleshoot the things and make the changes and see if the file is actually being is already transcribed already. So I'm going to paste the error in here. And uh, what I'm also going to do is tell it to output txt transcription into transcriptions folder and what i'm also going to tell it is to output the txt transcriptions into the transcriptions folder so we don't have audio files and transcription files mixed inside one folder so it's telling me that the warning message i'm seeing is because the whisper file is trying to use half precision which is not supported on cpu so it's falling back on single precision format instead. It's just a warning, not an error. So my code should still work as expected, which is what I suspected as well. Uh, to output the transcription into text folder for transcriptions. Okay, so it's giving me a new code for this right now. 
I'm just going to copy this full new code. I'm not going to save anything because this process is running. And I'm hoping that it's actually creating the transcription. So let's give it a bit more time. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to ask you this. How can I see the progress for the transcription? Okay. So it's telling me that it doesn't provide a built-in way to track the progress. However, we got the full transcription here. So it returned the full transcription to us. Transcription for check the lecture the mob. And yes, here it is in all its glory. However, what it did not create is it did not create a TXT file for us. So this is what we're going to be asking from it next. Okay, so it created some uh, extra steps here. Does this code output the transcription to a folder as a txt file question mark okay so this updated code should then hopefully uh, put this transcription file into a separate folder called transcriptions so i'm going to paste it in here click save and let's run the app again and see if it works so we now know that the first step is working so it's converting the mov then it's also working that it's checking if the if it's already converted. It's setting it to uh, OpenAI's Whisper to transcribe it. It's transcribing it. Now we need to make sure that we get the transcription file as a TXT file inside our transcriptions folder. So I'm going to run that again. So we have this new little folder that popped up here called transcriptions. So that's a good sign. And let's see if we're going to get the TXT file. Meanwhile, it's converting. I'm already going to start working on the next step because I'm going to assume that it works. So the next step is that we have to now give it some extra context. I'm actually going to wait with that. So this is something that we're going to come back to later. And I'm going to show you how the extra context works. First, before that, I actually want to send the TXT file into OpenAI's GPT 3.5 and have it generate a summary for us. Show notes, let's say. So what I'm going to do is great, everything works. Now let's add a next step where we send the contents of the TXT file to open AI API GPT 3.5 turbo and give it a, let's say a system prompt with the text as context with the uh, contents of the txt file as context okay and we actually got the jack .txt here as well so the first steps are working perfectly so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this add an extra step where we take this transcript and we then send it to open ai's api and ask it to gener generate show notes podcast show notes also a title based on the transcript for each episode so that's what we're going to do so let me think for a second here. So we're going to send the contents to the OpenAI API GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is, uh, which is a model that should have enough context for this, and give it a system prompt with the contents of the file and txt file as the context, right? Then save the return from OpenAI inside outputs folder. And what I'm also going to do is add a check if original file.mov is already converted into mp3 okay actually what i'm going to tell it that we already have a check we already have a check for mov to see if it's already converted into mp3 let's add another check where we see if the mp3 is already transcribed so we won't retranscribe it and send the txt straight to openai then save the return from openai inside outputs folder so we're, yeah so i hope we're following along so we're gonna basically add a step where uh, we now send the contents of the txt file the transcript into openai but we're gonna add a check in between to see if we already have the mp3 file converted into txt so we don't have to redo it every time or if you have multiple files in the inputs folder, then so it doesn't redo the files, retranscribe the files. So because there's no point in running the same process multiple times.
Okay, and let's see if it's gonna give us good code because we're on a roll here. Every co every piece of code that we're getting is actually working perfectly. So now it's telling me that I need to install OpenAI. So I'm gonna install pip install OpenAI. Perfect, that's installing. And then it's telling me that I need my OpenAI API key. So for this, what we need to do is go to platform.openai.com. And uh, hopefully you have an account here. If you don't, then create an account. Once you have it, then you have to log in. You click your uh, name here or personal here. Then you click view API keys. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to revoke this key because we don't need it. And I'm going to recreate it. So I'm going to create temporary key delete later. So I'm not going to have to blur the key. I'm just going to delete it later. So you can see it doesn't matter right now. And after this, I'm just going to get my secret key and I'm going to copy it. So or I'm going to leave it open here because I'm going to have to copy it later. So now it gave me a new full code. So I'm going to copy this code, paste it in here. And this is where I have to put my OpenAI API key. I put my key here. I'm going to save it. And then let's look at the code for a second. So we have this MP3 file exists, transcription file exists, scripting the transcription. And we're sending the thing to engine text of inch 003. So I'm not sure if we want to use this one. Uh, max tokens 100 is not true either. And prompt is transcription. So this does not seem right either. So it's just reading the transcription file. Okay. So we're going to have to do a few changes here. And the first change is that we're going to have to actually see how the OpenAI API works. So we're going to find the documentation. Fortunately, there's a button for it here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to look for models. So we have GPT 3.5. I don't know what GPT 3.5 is. So this is the correct name. So GPT 3.5 Turbo 0301. I think so. GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. That's the correct one because we want 16,000 tokens and this model has the most tokens. The only model that has more tokens than this is the GPT 432K. But I'm not sure I have access to it and I'm not sure many people do. So actually, let's see if we do have access to this. What I can do is I can go to Playground and see if it's over here. So you can see all the models that you have here. So I have the Turbo 16K and I have GPT 4 for chat. So if I have complete, so I don't have the good ones. If I have edit, I don't have the good ones and with chat either. So unfortunately, I don't have access to the good ones and I don't think many people do. So we're going to have to keep using the, uh, the one that we found here in the documentation, which is the turbo models. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this from here. And I'm going to paste it over here inside this engine prompt. And we're going to set max tokens to, let's say, uh, 15,000. Right. And uh, yes, now we need to fix the prompt. So what I'm going to tell it is I changed these settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually provide it. No, I think it should know about this, but let's see. So I'm going to provide it this context here, maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm going to look at the playground for a second. So we want to use the chat model and we want to use the 16K. And we want to provide a system prompt as well as the user prompt. So the system prompt is how we're going to prompt ChatGPT ourselves and the user prompt is going to be the content of the TXT file, so the transcript. So I want to see if we have any tutorials here on how it works with Python. Python. Let's see Python library. Uh -huh, so it's telling me messages and model. So instead of engine and model, so um, I'm going to actually copy this here. Uh, fix these according to OpenAI documentation. And um, 
tell it that I want to use the I want to use the model and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to models and I'm going to paste a bit of extra context there's also a 3.5 and I'm going to tell it about this one and let's see if it can solve this problem here okay and supposedly it's managing and it's giving us new code now so we're importing still all these things open ai here we have our api key here be careful not to like copy it then save it then delete your api key because it's not actually pulling your api key in here so i'm going to wait for the uh, new code to finish generating so we had a bit of things to figure out here but uh, this is part of the process so Documentation is always your friend and knowing which models you're going to use and everything else is always your friend. And we're using the GPT 3.5 Turbo simply because that's the model that we have access to that has the most tokens. Otherwise, I would love to use GPT 4 32,000 because it's smarter, has more context, everything else, but I just don't have access to it. Or even better, what we could use, what I would love to use is Claude, Claude.ai's API, which has a context of like 100,000 tokens. However, I don't have access to that one either. Now, there have been rumors on X or Twitter uh, about some new models floating around that have a context of like two or three million tokens, but I haven't played around with them just yet. However, in theory, we could potentially chain these ones in here as well. But let's keep working with the Turbo 16K for now and let's see if we can make our app work. So I'm gonna copy the full new code. It's actually, instead, I'm gonna copy all this part. So everything below the API key, so we don't replace our API key. And I'm going to paste it in here, and I'm going to click Save. So uh, let's see if we have our system message and everything. Okay, you are helpful assistant and transcriptions. Okay, perfect. So the system prompt that we want to send ChatGPT is now that um, you will be giving a podcast transcript. Please take the transcript and return five titles in the style language and tone of Jim Quick's Quick Brain podcast and also full show notes in the style of the Quick Brain podcast. Full, I'm going to say full episode show notes. And what we're also going to do is we're going to add some formatting. Return to titles first under heading, tit under heading title ideas and then the show notes under heading show notes perfect so this is the full context this is going to be the system message and the user message is going to be the transcript that we have so i'm going to save it and i'm going to run that and let's see if this actually works so mp3 file for jack delaccio already exists skipping a version transcription exists skipping transcription and let's see if we get an output from open ai now and the process finished and we have an output, jackdelacio.txt and title ideas, sleep like a pro, push your brain powers. We have five title ideas and we also have show notes. So let's see if the show notes are any good. I'm going to just add some uh, spacing here so we can read them. Uh, so it's it didn't actually add show notes. So I think I need to clarify what show notes are and everything else. Aha, okay, I just remembered there's one more one more uh one more thing that we have to do here. So uh the show notes that it returned us. Welcome back to the Quick Brain Podcast, where we provide brain bites to help you optimize your brain. In today's episode, we're diving into the importance of sleep and how it can boost your brain overnight. Our guest Chuck Delaccio, founder of Essentia, has a nice sleep for over 20 years and everything. He shares his ex expertise, okay. So it's basically re just uh, restating the intro. So we need to workshop or prompt a bit. And the other thing is that the transcription actually isn't correct. So as you can see, it transcribed quick brain, which should be actually written like this. And I, th I think it didn't, uh, yes, Essentia, but the real name is Essentia. So what we're going to do here is we need to... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to delete this, delete the TXT, and I'm also going to delete the transcription. And for the sake of this, I'm also going to, no, not, not just yet. So, okay. Great works for the, um, 
transcription with whisper i want to add a flag and with whisper the great thing you can do is whisper has flags so you can specify what you want from whisper since we're right now only outputting the txt file i'm sure that we're only asking for texts from whisper right now so let's see if we're using where we're using whisper and where we're getting the text from and I'm sure of this because Whisper, what it originally does, it outputs many different formats. So if you want text, you need to specify that you want only text specifically. So let's see where we, uh, where did we specify? Great works. So I'm going to ask it to where did we specify that we only want TXT from Whisper. Meanwhile, I'm going to look for Whisper documentation. Open AI Whisper documentation GitHub. So we have the OpenAI Whisper package here. And over here with the OpenAI Whisper package, we should have some, how uh, we don't have them here. So what we can do, if you open up your console and you type in Whisper, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see different flags that we can use with Whisper. And we want to use some of these flags. So it's telling us that the result is text, okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this in here. Can we use some of these flags? Question mark. Because these things are called flags. So these are specifications that we can add to Whisper. Uh, so it knows how to do the thing, what it needs to do. So for example, output format. So if you don't input anything, it's going to output TXT, VTT, SRT, TSV, JSON. Um, basically the default is all. But if you specify TXT, then it's only going to output TXT. So it's telling me, yes, we can use the flags. However, in Python script, you're using Whisper Python API, not the command line interface, the Python. The Python API does not, su does not support these flags directly. If I want to use these flags, I need to call the Whisper. Uh, OK, yes, it's telling me I need to call the Whisper as a sub process. So this is actually what I wanted to do originally. I was surprised it worked like this because uh, we were calling the FFmpeg as a sub process. So now let's rewrite the code. So in order so we could add these flags because they're, they're going to help make everything more accurate. So in order to do that, let's have it rewrite the code where it uses Whisper as a sub process. So please rewrite code with Whisper as sub process. Don't change anything else. Okay, actually I'm going to state that it's hopefully not going to break anything. So while it's generating the code, I'm going to tell you about the flags that you can use when you were running it as a sub process. So we can specify the model that we want to use. Uh, we can specify, the, I don't know what the device does actually, uh, output directory. So you can specify where you want it output it, the format you want it output it with. Uh, verbose, uh, I don't know what it does. We would have to Google it. Uh, but you can also transcribe and translate so you can add two processes. You can transcribe and translate something. And these are all the languages that it speaks. And you can specify the language that your uh, transcription is in because this is going to make your transcription more accurate. Temperature is how wild it can get and how it's going to get th some things. I don't know what the best stuff is. Patients don't know the length penalty. But what I actually wanted from here is I want to add the initial prompt. So initial prompt is a great flag because with the initial prompt, I can give Whisper context as I would give context to ChatGPT. So what I can tell it is that all of these transcripts are for the quick brain podcast. They're about brain health and they're going to use medical terminology like, uh, let's say, brain derived neurotropic factors and uh, other things. And it's, they're also going to be, the podcasts are also going to use, uh, let's say, brand names that the guest for this episode is Jack Delasio, uh, the CEO of the brand Essentia. So if you write these things out and if you give Whisper this context, the transcript is going to be way better. So the better your context for Whisper, the better your transcript. And you can provide the context with this initial prompt flag over here. Okay. So I'm going to copy the new code, everything below the API key that we have. Copy. I'm going to paste it in here. Perfect. Save. 
and aha okay so it reset my content prompt so i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna paste this in here i'm gonna copy my content prompt and i'm gonna delete this over here so and now i have my content prompt and i can paste it in here but we still want to workshop this just a bit so let's see sub process and sub process run sub process run sub process run whisper perfect okay so we use the model base uh which is fine yes let's use the base i'll perform a txt output directory transcription folder so what we're also going to do is i'm going to add let's instead ask chat gp to add it add So add an initial prompt like this. But otherwise you just like basically add a comma. So you add a comma, open it. Initial prompt. And then uh, you add a comma again. Content over here. Bas basically this is how you add it. And you add another comma. Right. So, I'm, But I'm going to undo this and I'm going to copy whatever chat GPT gives me. Just for safety. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this here. Let's see what happened. Get these things back. So whisper model base. I'll perform a TXT output directory transcription folder in this prompt content. So perfect. So now we're going to provide the content. What we can actually do here is um, I'm going to create a new file called content.txt and pull the content from content.txt so you don't have to go back for every transcription and edit the code instead you can just edit the contents of the content.txt right so let's do it that way so we have a bit more complexity here but it's going to be easier to use later on so read the content from content.txt so where do you have to put this let me figure it out Okay, perfect. Uh, and if you don't know where to put these things, you just like ask ChatGPT to regenerate the whole code, regenerate the code in full. But I think I figured it out and I think it needs to be here. If it doesn't need to be there, we're going to fix it later. And now it's saying that the initial prompt is from the initial prompt, looking at content.txt. So, okay, I'm going to save it. And what I'm going to now type into the initial prompt folder is giving the transcription some context is this is a podcast episode of the Jim Quick's Quick Brain podcast it's a conversation between Jim Quick and Jack Del Axio the CEO of Essentia Addresses it's a brain health themed podcast and will contain medical terms like brain derived neurotropic factors just the more context you give it the better acronyms like bdnf and um, talk about specific biohacking gadgets and use medical jargon okay so this is the context right okay gonna save it and what I'm also going to do is we want to edit this a bit. You will be giving the podcast transcript because I wasn't too happy with how it uh, how it returned the show notes and the full episode of show notes. The show notes are a summary of everything that was discussed in the episode. They should contain links to resources it's you don't need to create the links just create the show notes and imply which things we need to link to um it's it's a broken prompt right now you can probably come up with something better but let's let's try it so now what we did is we changed the code so it uses a whisper as a sub process thanks to which we can add flags and then uh, it uses this uh, context 
uh, flag and we updated this uh, system content as well. So, okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to delete the MP3 file. So we have the MOV file only in the inputs folder and we don't have anything else in any of the other folders, not outputs, not transcriptions. So we're going to run the full software from start to finish and see if we get what we need inside output folders. So this is how it's going to work. I'm actually not even going to run it here. Let's say that uh, I know that this is over here. So this is where we have our folder, the AI transcription app. And let's say that now I put a new episode. I just put this in here and I want to run this app to get everything output it so what I'm gonna do is whoops I'm gonna open up my terminal I'm gonna navigate to this AI app and inside my own terminal I'm gonna type python 3 app.py click enter run so first now what it's doing is it's generating the uh, mp3 file now it's starting the transcription for Jack Delaccio so it detected the language. So now we're getting more info because it's running as a sub process. So this is going to give us more info. So we can see in real time as this is being transcribed. And we can see thanks to the extra context that we provided, then quick brain podcast is transcribed correctly. And limitless book is transcribed correctly and everything is transcribed correctly. So that's perfect. And let's see if it finishes the transcription, now puts everything properly. And if we can get now good results from OpenAI's API, I think we can get, actually get good results from the uh, from our software that we built right now. Okay, it still uh, said Essentia wrong, but it doesn't matter. This is something you can go in manually and fix later on. Or if it's misspelled in the final, uh, final file, then you can basically fix it. But I'm wondering why I did that, because I did tell it that uh, CEO of Essentia mattresses. So maybe we need to like work on rewording the prompt. Uh, but generally for the context of a software like this, such as this one, you don't need it this detailed, for example. Maybe perhaps you don't need to provide the guest name every single time so you can use one prompt. Or if you want to change it around, if you want to work more, or like let's let's say you have 10 episodes that you want to run through this because I think the way it's built up right now is you can throw 10 MOV files inside the input folder and it's going to run through all of them and generate outputs for all, for all of them. So in this case, you might not want to say it's a conversation between Jim Quick and Jack Delaccio. So it's a conversation between Jim Quick and his guests. So you make it more generic. And uh, this way you can keep using it and you can workshop it and keep making it better. But what might end up happening is that you're going to get some things a bit lower quality. Maybe there's some tiny mistakes so that you're going to have to fix later on in the outputs. Like, for example, this Essentia instead of Essentia. Okay, it's halfway through now. And as I said, this is a benefit of running it as a sub-process. So we actually see how the transcription is being made and everything. Oh, the exact thing that we're doing right now here for the tutorial. It's actually, uh, you can find this full tutorial on OpenAI's own website that I just found. <laughs> so... If you don't, if you didn't manage to do something from here, or if you think there's a more effective way to do something that I just did, uh, this right here is a full tutorial of the same thing basically that we did, like a similar thing, not the, not the complete the same thing, but pretty similar. So, transcribing meeting notes with GPT-4. So you can uh, you can look at this tutorial from the documentation of the OpenAI's own website. <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, okay, let's see if our program finished not quite yet but we're all almost done i'm actually curious to see how long was this episode the original one okay it's 35 minutes so it's we need to convert eight more minutes i'm just gonna let it run okay and the transcription finished okay finished the transcription for jack delaccio so now what it's doing, hopefully it's sending it to OpenAI and we're going to get a summary in the outputs folder once it's done. So let's wait for that process to finish. And here it is. So moment of truth to see if it's worth your while, if we actually didn't waste any of your time and you can get a working app running. Perfect. So title ideas. We have five title ideas. They're pretty good. And we have the show notes. 
in this episode, Jim Quick, check the light show. Okay, you might want to still uh, workshop the show notes a bit, so you would have to just change this prompt around. But other than that, I think it's great. Like, we just need like, a better description, but the program works. So what you can do essentially is you can drop like 10 different podcasts in here, click run, go have some lunch, come back, and then you have uh, full transcripts as well as show notes and everything for all your podcast episodes. And so one thing that we did, out, we added output format TXT here. If you change this TXT to all, or if you change it to, uh, if you delete it in general, what you're also going to get this in the transcriptions folder, not just the TXT file, but every other file format. So the VTT, VST, SRT, whatever, they were all these subtitle files. So if you need those, just delete this and maybe ask ChatGPT actually to then uh, find it from the TXT file. But it, I think it should manage it. So I think it's safe to just delete it. Then you're going to get everything. And then ChatGPT is going to take the TXT file to send it to uh, OpenAI. But okay, this is the tutorial. This is how you chain these processes together. So we took a file, MOV, MP4, WAVE, MP3. We uh, converted whatever the format was into MP3. Then we sent it to Whisper. We transcribed it with extra context that we actually added later perfectly. And then we sent it to OpenAI's GPT 3.5. And finally, we have got title ideas plus show notes. And that was it. Easy, just as promised. If you want me to take this a step further now, for example, rebuild it in JavaScript as a web app that you can then launch with, I don't know, let's say payment terms and payment methodology or like whatever for payment that you need to build your own first functional AI wrappers, just let me know in the comments. Till then, have fun with AI and watch this video next.